Hi folks, welcome back to On Call with Insignia. I'm your host, Paolo Aquino. And with us in episode 113, call number 113, we have with us on the show, Jessica Hendra-Bajaja. So she is the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer of e-commerce enabler shipper based out of Indonesia. So we're very happy to have her on call with us. And we're going to be talking a lot about not just shipper, but also some of the specific projects that she's working on within the company, as well as her own learnings as a leader, having been with the company for a few years now. So thanks Jess for coming on the show. I know it's a busy time right now for, for shipper. Thank you so much for having me and congrats on 113 episode. <laughs> Uh, it's That's certainly a been a, yeah, and a good number of those calls have been actually with several shipper leaders like Phil, yeah. Rudy, Marvin, Agus, Craig, and now you. So as I told Craig the last time, you know, we're just going down the list of uh, awesome leaders you guys have with shippers. So it's your turn now, I guess, to, to, you know, let our listeners know a little bit more about you and your background. Maybe you can share with us how you first joined Shipper. Like how you found out a company, what convinced you to join that company at that point? I think it was like two years ago or so. It's a, definitely a different company then. So what made you decide to join that? And maybe you can share a little bit of what your first day or week was like. Yeah, definitely. It's actually almost exactly three years ago. Oh, three years so, ago. Okay. Yeah, Congrats. almost <laughs> exactly three years ago. So yeah, how we started. So I actually, I started another logistic tech startup called Porter that's back in 2018. Our mission then was to widen access to logistic infrastructure in Indonesia. So we want to reach not just like, you know, the first tier cities, but until the remote areas, enabling them with proper logistic infrastructure. So we did that by decentralizing post office management to grow that mom and pop shop agents to 12K around Indonesia in just one year. So that's, that's when I met Woody and Phil from Shipper in 2019. We've been talking a lot about how to digitize logistics in Indonesia. And finally, in 2020, so in February 2020, so exactly two years ago, we merged, basically Shipper Acquire Us. We joined forces and it was really the right timing because it's right before COVID, right, exciting right. times. <laughs> yeah, so right before COVID, right timing, because virtually due, due to COVID, the demand for logistics increased significantly. So not only for e-commerce space, but also for enterprise and B2B space. I mean, I click with them right away because our vision is aligned. What we want to do is pretty much aligned. We share the same values as well for the company. So everyone at Shipper are very entrepreneurial and always pushing boundaries to innovate and contribute to the society. Uh, so that, that's how I joined Shipper. And how was your, your first day or first week like? I guess it was sort of like a, you know, just like post acquisition, right? So it's like, yeah, it's been very hectic it's as well. It's definitely hectic, definitely hectic. But Phil and Budi make sure that transition is very smooth. Again, we share the same values across the company. So it's a very smooth transition. Yeah, I mean, in this market, especially, there's a lot of talk about, you know, M&A opportunities and all of that. And I, mm -hmm. uh, I always mention about, you know, shippers, yeah, acquisition, you know, packing importers. As an example, it's good, it's great to know that you are part of that story <laughs> and yeah. that you got to join Shipper through that. So definitely something great that came out of that. Yeah, uh, but definitely, definitely no time to brace at all at that time because mm. COVID happens right away. Right, so right. just like work, work, work until, until today. Yes, yeah, so I suddenly it's already three years. It's just like a bling of an eye. So maybe you can share with us like what your, you know, what it means. Obviously, everybody's familiar with Chief Marketing Officer, but obviously that definition changes company to company. So maybe you can share what that scope of work means for you with regards to, you know, Shipper's mission, as you mentioned it earlier, right? So how does your work as CMO and Shipper differ from previous experiences that you've had? Sure. Yeah, so Shipper vision, as I mentioned, is moving society forward. Our mission is to make supply chain accessible to everyone. Indonesia itself is a very entrepreneurial country. So as you know, we have 62 million SMEs and they contribute slightly over 61% to Indonesia's total GDP. So that's a lot. So this is a big opportunity that we believe in. We want to make sure that we enable these millions of SMEs to grow and contribute more to Indonesian economic development. Especially during COVID days, this is especially important. And then they go digital. So this is where shipper can help them the most to continue their operations, day-to-day -day operations, despite them stopping their offline business. So as CMO, my goal is to make sure a shipper is on top of every business owner's mind, especially mm, in Indonesia. 
just like any marketing, brand awareness is definitely what we aim for. And from there, also customer acquisition. But definitely my goal during COVID, because we believe in the service that we offer to SME. This is something that can help them grow exponentially, especially during COVID time and even today. So we want to make sure that everyone knows us and they eventually use our service. So we are a tech-enabled business, and as we all know, historically, logistics had a very conventional and complex business mm. processes. It's also very expensive to have a robust logistics infrastructure. So this is a luxury that only big businesses can have. So usually the enterprise would have multiple warehouse across Indonesia or really reliable partners across Indonesia. Again, this is a luxury that only big businesses have. So what we do at Shipper, we aim to make sense of these complexities and implement technology to streamline the process and makes it easier to any business owner to access the robust supply chain infrastructure that wasn't available to them before. So it is to them now. At Shipper itself, we partner with the big logistics trivial companies in Indonesia. So the major ones already connected to our API. We also work with hundreds of transporter partners and we currently manage over 300 warehouse across Indonesia. So these are the supply chain network that all the small SMEs can tap into and use to grow their business. So yeah, we, we believe in our service, in our business model, and hopefully SMEs can grow with us as well. And that's our message. We're their partner to Grim. And and I think even in, in last year as well, Shipper mm -hmm. has been also sort of enabling businesses a little bit beyond the logistics side as well, right? Correct, yeah. So, I mean, the e-commerce landscape is just growing every year or even every month. Every right. week it changes, right? So we do need to keep up with that trend. We need to see forward what's happening in other countries as well. What are the technologies out there that we can implement in Indonesia and help Indonesian SMEs grow? And so in line with that, I think even the marketing itself has gone beyond simply selling a shipper as a, you know, logistics enabler. And you're yes. actually having this particular event actually this month, uh, which is the legendary brand festival, which I think should be one mm. of the, you know, mm. one of the biggest of its kind in Indonesia, especially with partners that you have putting this together. So maybe you can share with us a little bit about the event first, and then we can explore, you know, how this ties in again to your, to your role and, and what you want to achieve within, within the company. As a marketer, we're not selling products. We're selling aspirations. So that's why our tagline is the man kamu berjuang. So we're, it's basically saying we're their partner to, to grow, not literal translation, but so that's the aspiration that we want to make sure every business is working with us to grow. So holding the legendary brand festival is aligned with Shipper mission to support and empower SMEs in Indonesia. So as you know, in late 2022, there is a global fear of the impending recession and that this will impact businesses all across the globe, especially SMEs. So through this event, we want to empower SMEs by providing them access to knowledge and also technology. So we're inviting our tech partners and our other partners. So hopefully they can create some partnerships through this event and help them grow their business despite the macroeconomic conditions. So at this event as well, we will be having this major legendary brands in Indonesia to share insights and just stories about how they grow their business over the decades. So I mentioned legendary brands. So these are the, the big brands of Indonesia that probably your audience probably know them already. We are inviting them as speakers, as, as panelists, and also as mentors to these SMEs. So they can, they can get insights on like how to stay in the business for decades, because all of these businesses probably have gone through multiple crises and recessions. So one story, there's this business that we invite, it's called Bucheri. So they're a shoe business that started their business in the 90s. So they've been around for 30 years now, and they've gone through multiple crises. One story that sticks with me is their story during the 98 crisis in Indonesia. Yeah. They use that crisis as an opportunity. So the owner said to me that that's when they decide when everyone closing the stores, they decide to open more stores. So that's an opportunity for them. And they're in business until today. They're growing significantly. They have 120 retail outlets across Indonesia. And the president wear their shoes. 
So it's like it's saying something about the the brand that they're building and the business that they're building. Thanks for sharing that example, actually, about the, the shoe company. I think a lot to learn, even for younger brands that are just starting out or even startups, learn about how to go through these crises, take advantage of opportunities in a, in a crisis. Maybe you can share examples of the sort of the other side, right? Like what are legacy brands that are part of this festival looking forward to learn themselves about all these like up and coming stuff through this event? Yeah, sure. So all of these legendary brands are legacy brands. They've been in business for decades. And of course, they continue to look for ways to connect the market and do market regeneration. So this is something that the the new brands, the one that's pretty much e-commerce focused, help these brands to learn about that and possibly grow together through collaboration. So one good collaboration that our brands have through this event is between Bucheri, so that's the shoe company, and there's this new brand called Humans. So Humans is a rising perfume brand in Indonesia. They sell product mostly on marketplace channels, and they've been growing so fast in the past years, and they even went to New York Fashion Week. They have massive followings. And again, they're e-commerce focused. So this is something that Bucheri, the previous shoe company, wants to learn. So they collab. They're going to create a new product that will be launched at Legendary Brand Festival. And the distribution will be done online and offline. So online will be on Humans e-commerce channel, while offline will be through Witchery 120 outlets. So that's a really good collaboration. And that's also a good regeneration of our get market. It's good for the Witchery, the legacy brands to expand to the new maybe Gen Z. And also for humans to tap into the previous generation that we try is very like hold strongly. So yeah, that's something that we really look forward to. And we look forward to more collaborations from other brands that participate in this event. Right, right. And I mean, that's really a win-win, win even also for, for Shipper being a platform, being able to connect all these brands together. Do you have like a North Star in mind for this festival? Like, what are you expecting to do, see or happen? I mean, you already have like product launches happening at the festival. Yeah. But afterwards, yeah. like, what are what are you expecting? How do you see this impacting Shipper's ecosystem as a whole? So for Shipper, these brands that are participating at the event are our customers or our future customers. So of course, in the end, there's collaborations happening. It will always impact positively to Shipper. Um, we're also inviting the SMEs, right? So they probably don't have a brand, but they're business owners, resellers, dropshippers. And those resellers and dropshippers probably become the resellers of the brands, whether the legacy or the new brands. And that's also something that all these brands are looking for. They keep looking for a new channel to sell their product. Right. And going to the resellers market and dropshipper market is huge. Through resellers and dropshippers, they can reach more customers not just in first year cities, but second, third, even fourth year cities across Indonesia. Yeah, so I, I think you you touched on something really interesting, which is sort of like even the distribution enablers or not necessarily the brands themselves, but, you know, resellers and enablers and all of those kinds of companies also have something to benefit from, you know, the, these kinds of collaborations. What do you see as like the outlook this year for these kinds of like companies? What are the opportunities for them in, in the market that you see specifically for, for Indonesia? I think opportunities is again to go aggressively and expand their sales channel. So still, I think for brands, they're still limiting their scope of sales channel in the major cities. But the opportunities is massive in Indonesia, not just in first tier cities or the major cities. There are more, more people outside of Jakarta, Bandung, and Medan. We have the largest population in Southeast Asia, and we haven't tapped everyone yet. So that's that's definitely an opportunity that all these brands, legacy or the new ones, need to tap into, especially during this recession. The one that has purchasing power is no longer the only one that lives in first year cities. The ones living in second and third have purchasing powers but don't know how to buy. So how to enable that, right? So I think that's a massive opportunity there. I think it's definitely interesting and actually a theme that we're seeing a lot, even in the Insignia's own portfolio companies, a lot more, you know, focused beyond Jakarta and, and tier one cities. Yeah. I believe the new commerce, the new commerce way is enabling that through like, social commerce, especially chat commerce. That's definitely a lot of technology that your portfolio is enabling that. I remember we had a conversation with Craig 
last year about, you know, Indonesian sellers, they still want to keep using WhatsApp. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> they still prefer to use WhatsApp. And so, and so like technology is, I mean, it's not necessarily innovation in the conventional way. But mm -hmm. more of, you know, fitting in towards what the existing behaviors are. Right? And, you know, going back to LBF, I mean, it's it's certainly a big event for sure. And there's a lot of, you mentioned a lot of like legendary brands that are coming in and you're also working with government on this and a lot of SMEs also that you're looking to, to see attend. But it's actually, you know, not the first time that you guys are doing this kind of initiative that's really focused on mm -hmm. collaboration and education. So what has your approach been to coming up with this sort of approach of, you know, education and collaboration? as a marketing strategy, right? Like zooming out, what is the long-term value that you see with this approach for Shipper? Especially since we're in sort of a market where, you know, companies are cutting costs, like especially marketing costs and all of that. How do you see this really benefiting both the company and even the larger economy in the long term? Yeah, so we do work closely with Indonesian government, various institutions to educate SMEs. So when we say education, it's not just like, hey, you're Shipper, <laughs> like ops only. We train them on branding. I think most SMEs also lack awareness on branding. So that comes also marketing, sales, operation, and most importantly is actually financial literacy. So we believe that capacity building is important. So having the right knowledge and business mindset are keys to SME growth and eventually Indonesian economic development. So as mentioned before, I mean, our vision is moving society forward. And this is how we believe in SMEs. It's an investment, definitely, that we make because we believe in that vision and want to make this training accessible to any SME business owners in Indonesia, especially in the second and third tier cities. So interestingly, SME business owners in second and third tier cities are the most enthusiastic ones. When we go there or do even sometimes online training sessions with those SME owners, they're definitely very hungry for knowledge. They're very curious. They want to know what's happening in Jakarta. And they are craving for this knowledge because they're passionate about the business and they want to grow. So it's really good to see that. And it's really good to see their passion to grow their business to become something of a legendary brand one day. So in relation to Shipper, we have service offerings that businesses of all sizes can use. So for a small SME, for example, they can just use our shipping aggregator service for pickups and for deliveries. And as they grow and they need a warehouse, for example, we have that as well. So we are creating ecosystem for businesses, whether they're SMEs or enterprise. And zooming into like your own experience as a leader, right? Is there anything that you've had to unlearn throughout your time, you know, leading marketing and comms at Shipper? Any, you know, specifically like ideas, habits, or perspectives that you've had to abandon as, you know, in order to be able to be better at your role or move Shipper forward? I think throughout the years, it's not that long, <laughs> but it's three years yeah. and three years yeah, yeah. and part of time is, in Startup Fan is like a uh, pretty long yeah. time already. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I do learn to empathize more. So empathize with our internal teams and also with the, our customers, especially. By doing that, I learn more about the other party. What is their aspirations and align what we want to achieve together. So yeah, I'm learning how to empathize more and good listening skill have yeah. better listening skills today. I guess as I mature, more mature now, hopefully in the past three years, that's kind of like what I feel like I've learned in the past three years. Right. Do you have a specific experience that, you know, made you realize that, that value or importance of that? So the way I learned this is I realized that in marketing, you cannot just push your own agenda. That's a hard sell. So then you empathize with your audience and you create a message that aligns with their aspirations. So that's, that's the empathizing. What is it that their aspirations are and align the message to that. You're not selling product, you're creating stories. I believe that's a good marketing for brand awareness. It's never really sell the product, but sell the stories and how that stories make your customer feel. Yeah, so I think that actually ties in full circle with <laughs> our discussion on LBF, because as you mentioned earlier, like at the beginning, that the motivation for this is really to, you know, adjust aspirations of SME owners and all of that to, to really grow their business. And I wanted to shift gears a little bit and talk about your hat as an angel investor. I think you've actually co-invested in some so, companies um, some yes. as well. So maybe you can share like how being an angel investor has, you know, impacted your work as a CMO and vice versa. In a way, I get to listen to more stories 
and listen to more entrepreneurs about their passion, building their company and their aspiration for Indonesia as well. A lot of the investment that I made is for Indonesian startups because that's also my personal value. I do want to develop Indonesia as the biggest economy in, in the world, hopefully one day. So I get to learn their stories, get to learn about their passion. I was myself a startup entrepreneur as well. So learning from my past mistakes, I advise them on things that they can avoid not making the same mistakes. But in the end, I learned from them as well. So I learned about their drives, about how they build their business. I love this journey as an investor. Definitely, I learned a lot from this experience. On that note, actually, my next question is also another advice question. And this is part of our Minute Masterclass sort of corner. Having, you know, I guess, talked to a lot of early stage founders and working at a growth stage, so you sort of see both sides, I guess. What one piece of advice would you give to like early stage founders when it comes to marketing as the marketing function or their marketing initiative scales? My advice to any sort of founders that I met, really know your audience, who they are, what's their behavior. Any marketing effort should be really targeted. So marketing, again, not, not just storytelling, but also needs to be data driven. And we have the tools today. So use that tool to really understand your target market. There's a lot of social media dashboard that we can use as well. So that's one, really understand your target audience. And two is to measure your efforts, measure your marketing efforts, whatever that is, measure it. Because when it's hard to measure, it's hard to justify, especially for new startups, every dollar counts. So understand what is it that you want to measure as well. Understand your metrics and start tracking early before it becomes too big and can't track anything anymore. Great, great advice. And I think a lot that obviously it depends on business to business, but definitely some good principles to have in mind. And on that note, let's move into our rapid fire round. So, you know, just some quick, short and sweet answers. Top three traits of a great CMO for you. As a storyteller, data driven and customer centric. What did it technology or <laughs> excites you the most today? Okay. I like this question. AI, especially chat GPT. It's very interesting, but I do feel like my fellow marketeers will see this as a threat because it's also replacing a lot of the like, copywriting, a lot of the things that marketers do as well. But ChatGPT is very interesting. Really looking forward to what's next from that. What's the most interesting thing that you've asked ChatGPT to do? Existential crisis question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure anytime existential crisis questions are asked on AI, it's definitely interesting. What's the most memorable class or course that you've taken or, or even thought if you thought of class or course? Right? This is very random as well, but the most memorable class was Forensic Science 101. Right. It's really random. I, I took it because it's just class, like a requirement. I, I need to pick a class and I, I took that. But it's interesting. It's also how to tell stories from data. And again, that's what marketing does. We tell stories from the data that's provided. Not that different, I guess. <laughs> Not that different. Eventually, it some, somewhat works. Speaking of courses, like if you were invited to give like a lecture, Harvard University or Stanford or uh, you know some prestigious university, like what would be the title of your lecture? First of all, I don't think I will be invited. <laughs> but I do want negotiation. That's something that I feel like I do every day. And as a marketer and and as a business person as well, that's a skill that I feel like not everyone has, but it's a very important skill. And it, actually that's something that we do every day and that that's an art. So that's also what I love doing. So yeah, art of negotiation would be the title. I think there's even a, isn't there even a book about art? Of, that's also There right. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chris Boss, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, I love that book. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> So looking back now, what is a skill, could be a soft skill or a hard skill that you believe you should have learned back in your time as a student? Could have been in uni or even earlier, way earlier. Well, this is easy. I should have studied Chinese lessons better. I actually just said this today. I wish I took my Chinese lessons more seriously back then because language, I think, is becoming more and more important as, you know, globalization and you know, the borders are just like really open up and we're doing business with everyone and especially from China now, there's a lot of business coming to Indonesia. But yeah, I should have learned that earlier. Right. And I think even Shipper also has some, has also some themes in, in China, right? If I'm not mistaken. 
Yep, yep, yep. That's that's a market that we always look into because whatever they're doing, we're five years behind. So right. that's how we look forward to a benchmark from other country. If there's something that you could automate in your job just by wishing for it, I guess insert chat GPD here. What aspect of that role would, what would that be? I don't think it's automate, but this is just a wish, right? Yeah. I wish I could teleport. I really wish I could teleport to place from place to place. Yeah, just because I mean, there's just a lot of things to be done different places now. So not really automate, just like a wish that I, I wish it could happen, but maybe in 10 years we can teleport. What's your favorite go-to destination in Southeast Asia or what trip are you most looking forward to taking in the region? In the region, I used to go hiking a lot. So I do want to hike uh, Kinabalu one day. I heard it's a very hard hike, so I need to get back in shape, but Hiking Mount Kinabalu is something in my wish list this year. Awesome, awesome. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully you get to you get to do that. What's your favorite activity to de-stress? My favorite activity to de-stress, watch Netflix mm. and just eat. Oops. So that kind of, little, you know, little... conflict thing. <laughs> conflict thing with going back to the gym and getting healthy, but I do like to chill and just watch TV. Right, right, right. What was the last thing that you, what was the, anything that you recommend that you just watched? There is this documentary about F1. That's oh. really, that's really good on Netflix. That would be a show that I would recommend for anyone that loves Formula One. Actually, my next question is anything that you'd like recommend. But yeah, apart from shows, anything else, like any book or any, you know, anything else, any tools or any resources that you'd like to recommend for our listeners? Well, that book, Chris Boss, that book about negotiation. So he was a FBI agent. He negotiated life or death situation. So I read the book. I watched his masterclass, um, oh, wow. loved the way he delivered. But yeah, that's something that really changed my life and how I become a better negotiator and just better business person in general. Right, right. Yeah, and adding to the list of our recommendations is also to, yeah, just check out if you guys will be able to join the, the LBF and you're listening to this and are interested in learning more, do, do check that out. They'll be posting a lot more about it on social media as well. So you can check out Shipper's social media to learn more about that. And we'll also add some links in the podcast description for you guys to access. In the meantime, you know, thank you so much, Jess, for coming on the show. Really interesting to hear from a marketer's perspective how Shipper is actually building the really the, the backbone for, you know, SMEs to grow uh, in Indonesia and, you know, all the best with the LBF as of our recording. Things are still about to get into full swing. I know it's uh, definitely a busy time and hopefully we can catch up again later on and, and see how things have panned out. But thanks again for coming on the show, Jess. Thank you so much for having me.